Hey, welcome back to the Dancing Sober podcast and welcome to the new studio. Right here I could throw my legs up and uh, relax in this little booth that we have here. One of my favorite things to do at a restaurant is to sit like this and um, so I'm really liking this new setup. I don't know how long it's going to be this way though, but I'm happy to still have a studio to be working in. I am going to say a big shout out to my sponsor, Movita Juice Bar. Don't forget to go to movitajuicebar.com to look for locations and also go and your food apps and look for Movita Juice Bar so you can order stuff to be brought to your house. Don't forget our second sponsor, which is Picaresca Cafe. Picaresca Cafe is a little coffee shop in Boyle Heights, right near Sears on Soto, where the next to where the Bank of America used to be inside a little um, indoor shopping mall. Tiny little place, but they're awesome. I love Picaresca Cafe. And um, yeah, go visit them sometime and let them know that I said what's up. Follow both of my sponsors on Instagram. Here's their Instagrams. Follow Movita Juice Bar and follow Picaresca Cafe. And tell them I said what's up. Don't forget, shout out to Outer Circle Media, our studio here. And they keep this whole thing going. So shout out to Outer Circle Media. And if you want to make a podcast, hit them up at OuterCircleMedia.com. This week we have a guest from the Hollywood industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Martin. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dancing Sober podcast. We're here in the new studio. Check out the colors, check out the blacks and the blues. <laughs> Today, um, Baptizing this new studio is um, a friend and our very special guest today, Jen Martin. Hello. Thank What's you. Thanks up? for interviewing me. <laughs> I'm so excited. excited. It's kind of cool to um, interview somebody who's like also a big fan of the podcast. <laughs> thank <laughs> so you. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate think... your support like so much. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, We've been friends for a while now. I mean, mm -hmm. geez, I don't even know how many years now. But um, you know, let's let's uh, go over it for the people. And and yeah. um, Jen is a costumer and um, works with Ayatsi and yeah. a couple of a bunch of stuff that we're gonna get into yeah. right now. So let's start with um, what's up, Jen? What's up, <laughs> Where were you born? Thank you so eh? much for having me. Um, I was born. Um, I was born, but I don't know where. Probably in Norwalk or Downey. Okay. Yeah, I don't really, I'm not too sure. I never really looked into that. Yeah, but local. Somewhere around there, yeah. 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 And um, so you grew up in those neighborhoods or? Yeah, I'm yeah. from Southgate and I lived there most of my life. I actually just left like maybe like right before the pandemic hit. I moved right. to Koreatown, but I've lived in the same house most of my life. Um, it's a... Um, my grandma's from Guatemala and uh, my grandfather's from Mexico. And so um, just being in like Southeast LA and um, Southgate just is, is just my heart, you know, like mm. I like being there. It just feels comfortable. And did um, you used to run around the streets? Oh God. Or, yeah. Or just, were you an indoor kid? No way. Always playing in the streets. Um, I can imagine you were a skater. Yeah. A little bit. Were I tried. You? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried for a bit. <laughs> I still skate though. Um, let's see, like playing in the street, playing ball in the street, playing with the hose, yeah. um, water balloon fights, boys versus girls. Um, Cops and robbers. Yeah. Like chasing <laughs> Ilote men and like the raspado man, like, hearing the you know like hearing the horn and trying to find out where they were just like <laughs> blocks and blocks circling blocks um yeah I, I i loved um growing up in in that neighborhood what was your like um like middle school and high school experience like middle school and high school um high school i I'm all, I've always been kind of quiet or just like not a big like group person, maybe mm. just like one or two people. So I think high school was very much that. And I hung out a lot in uh, the art room and the computer room and the library. 
Um, and yeah, I think that was kind of my my safe space mm-hmm. and like my space where I could like explore all kinds of ideas and things and and uh, yeah, my outlet of like being creative. And when, think, when did you start that? I mean, how old were you when you just like started picking up oh gosh, art? Just like childhood, like doing travesuras in the garage and like gluing things and painting things and um, just kind of organizing things with like all the other neighbor kids and like getting a book from the library with crafts and being like, okay, today we're going to do this one. Mm. And like, you know, just whatever we found in the house, like Mm. empty bottles and like uh, newspapers and things like that. And um, yeah, just like always trying to uh, explore different things and ideas and like ways to be creative. Did you have a, a class or a specific like something where you were like, oh, damn, like art is something that I can do? I mean, I'm going to be really honest. It was the highlights book. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, you know, like, I don't know that. What OK, that? so there's this like magazine when you're a kid, a little kid. I think it's been on, been going on since like, oh, I want to say the 20s or 30s. Um, But um, yeah, like in 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 the uh, pediatrician's office or like a dentist's office, there's like a kid like a magazine for kids called Highlight, oh, okay. and there's always like crafts inside. And so like I would just turn to that page and be like, try to memorize it when I was at the doctor's office or something, and be like, okay, I'm gonna do that one when I get home. Or um, and then I found like I think at the library like uh, a craft like the I think there's a I want to say the library in Bell I think. Um, but there was a, there was a book on, on just crafts or like a collection of highlights crafts. And so Ooh. I just took it home and kind of never returned it. <laughs> so you went into like, you liked having like, um, I guess art projects that were already like designed and, and had all the instructions and it was easy for you to like, you know, go to the next step and go to the next yeah. step. It was like step by step kind of a thing. Yeah. Cool, cool. It was very accessible. You know, it's like, oh, I can do this or all I need is yeah. a bottle or, oh, we had a party the other day. There's a bunch of bottles <laughs> or like, um, you know, just taking household things and like, you know, uh, playing with them, making them more fun or or going into like my grandma's um, closet where she had like her jewelry from like the 50s and 60s and mm. like pelucas and like um scarves and um things and just like playing hardcore dress up like that and becoming a different character with your friends like it's just so when i I was about to ask that like when you were young did you were you into like that kind of thing like making characters or or were you into movies already was there something about cinema that struck you i think just movies kind of transport people you know Mm. and it's just like okay it's not Southgate but it's like a 1940s musical or it's um, a fantasy film or it's um, you know like a a film set in a different country you Mm. know it's like oh wow look at all these places look at all these things you know and it's it's all you know in a movie and all I have to do is go to the video store you know you know around the corner from the house and, and just pick something out and like what do, what do I want to see today what do I want to learn today or um, I thought that was really uh, just fascinating that that we could do that and then I guess in high school I I, I was a good student I just didn't think that the school I think there was a lot of like corruption <laughs> in my school <laughs> and so I didn't really try Wait. Did you go to school in Bell? No. (laughs) No, I went to school. um, I went to school at St. Matthias in Downey. But like we we did have some leadership um, that was not um, making the best use of our funds. Mm. And like even the students know it's like, how can how can really? Yeah, like we knew like we're just like, this isn't where's this money coming from? (laughs) Like and so um, I, I stayed. I tried to like stay home a lot and be sick you know I'm just like oh I'm sick grandma (laughs) you know Um, because there'd be these um, like uh, what is that called a uh, there'd be like movie marathons on Mm. like the old movie channel Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and so um, they'd be like uh, black 1930s black westerns Mm -hmm. and I'm like what 1930s black western marathon I need to see this 
Um, and then, or like all musicals or all whatever marathon or all Marilyn Monroe Monday or something, you know? Mm. And so um, I kind of, yeah, just stayed home and like just took it all in, you know? Was, was um, I know you had a vintage shop, online yeah. vintage shop. Was that like one of the first things that you did that was like your own thing or did that come after you were already working? Uh, yeah, vintage, selling vintage has been a part of my life since I was like 14, 15. Okay. So I'd watch all these old movies, right? And like, I'd, I'd like see the year, you know, and be like, okay, 1938 or 1927 or whatever, you know, just like take it all in, take it all in. And then, um, and just the details, like women's hair, their nails, their shoes, their the the atmosphere, the space, the mm. shots, you mm -hmm. know, like everything was just so magical. Um, then I would go to like a thrift store, like my local thrift stores on like Long Beach Boulevard that aren't there anymore because um, there was a bunch of them, you know, there was a bunch of them, independent ones, not like big um, like Good Salvation Will, Armies. Think, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And so I'd go there and then I'd find all these like amazing pieces like, oh, like a 20s shirt or a 30s dress or mm. um, a 50s, whatever, um, men's and women's. And so I'd find all these things and I'm like, OK, well, this isn't my size. So like I should just sell it. <laughs> so I would start selling and eBay just kind of just started mm. at that time. And so um, and you could only pay with cashier's check or like a regular check and so really? I didn't yeah that's funny so I didn't have a bank account because I'm like 14 15 so I would just have to you know walk to the market get get all these like cashier's checks and stuff and so um yeah I would just flip clothes um and then uh, or go to vintage stores and say like hey I found all this stuff can I trade you mm. you know and so it was always kind of a, a hustle or a business mm. just flipping yeah yeah, yeah. Just get something cheap and sell it for a little more or a lot more like that stuff's worth a lot of money you know and then then but I you had the eye for it which was the big thing right yeah I mean, knowing what to buy or? well you just it's just learning you know like reading like books about fashion history and so you went deep then you would dive history. deep into all that oh yeah yeah i do yeah. my research hardcore you know yeah. because like you don't want to like find like a goatee dress and sell it to someone for like cheap you know it's like oh no wait how much is this worth okay yeah. let's do this you know oh, wait how much do you have to make profit okay how much can do I feel comfortable making you know like profit and so it was like you know it's a thing that you have to learn you know and then but it's just like any other business and then over time I started working out these like really high-end like vintage stores and like Beverly Hills or like yeah like or also selling um at like Rose Bowl flea market or mm. independently uh, and so yeah it's always it's a really fun and interesting like source of income hmm. is is that what led you to working on costumes and films yeah like just that complete love for the fashion or for the time period or what was it or or was it that because I know you also went to trade tech yeah and you studied um like pattern making yeah. Like, so uh, like garments. Yep, yep, for the garment industry. <clears throat> um, so you really have gotten into even like fabrics and oh yeah, everything crazy. That's so cool. That's so interesting. Like the it just like the the history of fabrics, evolution of fabrics. Like everybody keeps coming up with new things all the time. Like technology changes, and like also like what's going on in society for like that trend to even occur. Yeah. You know, like like um. I guess, for example, like after World War II, like, or the beginning of like World War II, like um, to ration fabrics, women's skirts got shorter. You Is know? that why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of it being like mid calf, That's it was funny. like at the knee or above the knee. And it oh, was wow. like against the law to like use more fabric. Same with like the zoot suit riots. That's why it's like the zoot suiters were walking around with like all these like mm. yards of fabric on with these like you know big pants and like these like long jackets it's like you can't do that we're we're in war times you know like wow. and so that was just like a, a, a rebellious act yeah, in itself yeah, yeah, you yeah. know and so um yeah it's just all just um how how the clothes to kind of reflect the time and of society course. yeah of course oh yeah try trade tech <laughs> no no that's okay i was just gonna say like um try to connect like or or tell us how you went from being that young kid yeah selling you know flipping clothes yeah. online to 
to going to trade tech and then you know getting into the film industry and and i mean you've worked on some big films yeah. so let me name a few dunkirk carol which is a beautiful movie that i love vice which is one of my favorite movies and favorite directors and um also you worked on euphoria yeah that's crazy dude so rad <laughs> that's just a tiny list of yeah dozens of films that you've worked on right yeah yeah i mean let's how did you get from like 14 year old girl to that wow um so i never in my life thought i could work in movies like never in my life like southgate is not that far from hollywood like literally Mm -hmm. you know but like i guess like living in like my household we didn't go too far that direction like we kind of we never really went to the west side Mm -hmm. it was like this big thing like oh my god what my aunt would come and she would kind of show me um like the arts and like uh you know that side of town and things like that but um growing up I, I never thought I could work in film um I was gonna be a dental hygienist I oh, was really? first I was like striving to be a dental assistant and then mm-hmm. I was hoping to be a dental hygienist um that was until I met my husband and then he was just like well you really like clothes and things like why don't you try to work in fashion and I was like okay so Wait, um, how old were you guys this is this was ago, older sure. this was older I was like living out my my um my dental hygienist fantasies until I was maybe like in my mid mid to late 20s Hmm. You know, because I didn't think that I could do that. I didn't have any connection. I knew you needed connections and I didn't have any. And so um, I just thought like, oh, well, you know, like I'll just like watch movies and enjoy them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, Like I'll just. Uh, my part of the working in the film industry is watching them and yeah. with the money they make, they can make more. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'll just be over here cleaning teeth. I'll be a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um he was just like you should try it you just give it a try you know and i'm like and he's an artist himself so he he gets that yeah. yeah and he's really supportive and so um yeah i i i guess like he he t- you know su- suggested i i just even try i didn't even want to try i was mm. like no i don't want to fail i don't want to try and then so um so then i went to trade tech and i w- went to school for sewing and pattern making pattern making is like all the pieces Mm -hmm. that make a a, a garment and like figuring out all the math to make all the pieces fit and like the different sizes and there's a lot of like there's math yeah there's a lot that goes in (laughs) let alone a pair of pants that's even more complicated but um (laughs) or like shoes handbags like um but like going to school there like I, I just was going to do it just so I could fix vintage clothes, you mm. know? Um, oh, I see. You were like, oh, if I buy something and it needs to be hemmed, yeah. I'll fix it. I, I could learn how to do that. And then from there, I I loved film and, and costumes, um, but just as a fan. And then, um, and then one day, <laughs> um, uh, a representative from IATSE came. What? Um, because it, they were having Union Day or something, and so like in the auditorium they had like oh the, at Trade Tech. Yes, at Trade okay. Tech, yeah. the Plumbers Union. They had the yeah. the you know just like all all these different kinds of unions. You know like. Um, Can you explain IATSE what it is? For uh, IATSE is the International Stage Technicians. Association, I don't know, something like that. E. 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 (laughs) And so, um, so, but it's a union that supports. It's it's a union for all the film workers in, um, in, uh, yeah, any, any like big film or any union film. Um, pretty much anybody that works on a Hollywood film is part of IATSE. Yeah, Yeah. for the most part. It's kind of like you, you can't be a union, you can't work on like a big production and, unless you're a union member mm-hmm. and so um someone from IATSE international stage technicians I don't know I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually an even bigger word it's like their their name is like 11 words international alliance of theatrical stage employees yes. <laughs> the, oh man I was so off shout out to my assistant <laughs> Tara 
Um, Sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, like, so, so someone came from IATSE and they were talking about the union and they were showing the work and, and it was actually a costume designer um, named Betty Madden, who's like a really great um, activist in, in, uh, in IATSE. And um, she was showing her work and she did she did the costume to, to Captain EO mm. and she was showing that and I was like oh my god I loved Captain EO I saw that movie so many or that so many times and then you just go like this and try to like get everything you know like and I when I was looking at her work and I was like I can do that like I know how to mm. do all of that like I could do those pants I could do that shirt I could do the bodice like I took corset class like I could do that and so when I saw her and like saw the work I was like okay I could give it a shot you know so that led to um, a lot of working for free <laughs> mm. well I mean you that's know kind of what a lot of people do in the beginning yeah when it comes to an art practice yeah. like almost any kind of art you kind of start just free work to learn right no <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's not right. No, it's not right but, because it's a job. But it depends who you're working for, right? I mean, if it's a collaborative work or something like that, you do, you know, sometimes it's free work. Yeah, like, I guess so. Like, um, I guess it just depends if everyone else is getting paid, you know? Yeah, like, of course, yeah. Um, but if it's like, you know, a community project or something, like that's different. And we're all doing it for um, love and for you know um credit i mean but that it's kind of like a weird like what's the word i don't want to say fallacy but like just the idea of working for a credit copy credit that kind of yeah. sucks you yeah, know like sucks. like it doesn't make very much sense um like if you don't have the resources to do something like don't get a lot of people on board <laughs> you mm -hmm. know like that's mm -hmm. just my take on it but um yeah you know so I it, that started a, um so then I I kind of was like putting I, I found you know just Craigslist looked for Craigslist ads looking for PAs uh, production assistants um for the costume department and and um started doing that and then kind of worked my way up into like a costumer position um doing non-union which is like you know just not a big Hollywood production mm -hmm. um and um I, I would say you maybe get paid I don't know I don't know how much you know it just really varies you mm. know of how bad you want it you know and and that's kind of not a good thing because um, people want the experience and they want to be a part of something as part of something bigger and they want to collaborate mm. you know so um, yeah like um, doing non-union work does it is very helpful but um, I just don't think I think there there's a lot of room for um, taking advantage of people who really want to yeah. be a part of it. So from then, from doing all that, that's where you learned your chops, I guess. And yeah. Then you became part of the union. And yeah. Um, <coughs> what was that like, or where'd you go from there? From there, so I was doing non-union work, and then I was designing for non-union stuff, which was um, cool because. Um, it's you just I got to have more like creative um, say mm -hmm. and like build things sew things make things mm -hmm. um, and and then um, at the same time I was kind of like when I was doing like my non-union work and I was doing like uh, my head of department for the like costume department so I was a costume designer um, I was kind of uh, in parallel trying to get my union card and so um luckily they kind of like intersected and I and I finally joined union <laughs> um by by just like really working hard and just looking for people to I guess kind of give you a hand you know yeah. like 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 they see someone working hard it's like okay well I'll have you on my team you know yeah. and then you just keep um plugging away until how Somebody was it, gives you a shot. How was it that you got into the union? I know that it's, I mean, it's pretty hard to it's get really in, hard. right? So first, 
if you can tell us how you got in the union and then yeah. and then um what what would you tell somebody now trying to get in the union to do mm. well it was really hard um so i think i got in in a way that isn't a good way to get in um there's not a lot of pathways mm. um and there's like to join and in costume you either have to go on a show that flips which is very highly unlikely um or what does that mean that means that a show that's non-union becomes union okay um and then so there's that option and then there's like working at a costume house um and then there's um show i don't i don't know the other one there's a costume house there's that one nepotism (laughs) 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 you know and so um so i i interned somewhere um for a year and a half and i worked for free at a at a big company for a year and a half yeah and i did all this work um and then they were hiring people and so i applied and i didn't get the job Hmm. Um, and it was just to like hang clothes, like seriously, like, like I was hanging, I would be hanging clothes. Yeah. Like it wasn't like a, a job where you made decisions. Or... Yeah. Or like, I'm not capable of, like, I already been interning there for a year and a half working mm. for free. Like, you don't think I could hang clothes for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, and so, um, so then I, so, so, um, I was really bummed that I didn't get the job. Um, and then luckily someone, when I was interning there, (laughs) um, the person I was interning for would like hide, like, like literally like physically hide, like all the, like the books, like the research books. Um, and so she left. And so the new person who took over her job, like I saw her and I was like, oh, did where's this book? Or, or she asked me where the book was. And I was like, oh, she probably hid it. Like if you look over here and there. There's these like these places that she only wanted to bring them out if like a fancy designer came, you know, mm. she didn't want everybody looking at those books, this woman. And so, um, so I think, you know, like I, I, I kind of got close with her because mm. I knew where things were. And so, um, she, she hired me, okay. you know, and so, um, she hired you on a project that she was on brought you in or from no just (coughs) just for the company you know like luckily i guess there was like an opening another opening later and then she called me so like i got really lucky to like have someone help me but yeah like interning and doing all that work for free doesn't always help you know like i mean not everybody has like the freedom to not work for money Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so i'm flipping clothes yeah. while I'm working for free <laughs> and so um you know it pays it paid the bills like clothes have always like you know it's always been a thing okay so now you're working in Hollywood and you're working yeah. on these movies yeah tell us about some of that like I mean tell us about some of just like working on movies and being like fuck this is crazy and awesome yeah like it's amazing you know like I never thought that I would like be a part of this world you know this like yeah. exclusive world that's like projected you know as, as big as a building in front of me you know yeah. like um and so w- when i was in there I, I just felt really like lucky you know like lucky to be there and i bust my ass what was to your get first there. like job to like what was your first movie job? Uh, I don't remember. It's just some like everybody kind of always starts on like these like. What was the first m- movie TV. job that you remember that was like? Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Probably it's just been so many. Yeah, just yeah. because like I, in the beginning of my career, I I just kind of focused on period films, mm. and so like people would call me in to like find. You know whatever like oh i need a 1924 blah 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 i need a 1936 this and mm. so i'd go find it or like through my contacts with um the like vintage vendors that mm. i knew all my life that have known me since i was 14 you know it's like they you know they had it or they knew where to find it or or pull like entire racks like i did for dunkirk for all the women you know wow. like all the women i like 
pulled all the racks and like the clothes and put put them in outfits si- in sizes for these people you know wow. um for the, the background you know and so um and then and then like you know sometimes i would get hired to like look for like lead clothing mm-hmm. i guess but um so was there ever a moment that you felt like oh shit i made it did you ever have that moment yeah i guess so like um so first i joined one union which was the customers union local 705 shout out <laughs> um and then i joined another union which was the costume designers guild and that's mm. also ayatsi which was like for me was like next level like wow. oh my god i yeah. made it <laughs> Yeah. Just to because just to be a part of a union like that is a big deal. It is a big, huge deal because like here it's I am. It's kind of like permission to work. It is definitely permission to work, and I'm sitting here alongside like Oscar-nominated people. Like yeah. I'm in amazing company. You know, yeah. like it was a it was massive. I I yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite movie that you worked on, or a favorite oh, set of costumes know. that you helped make? Or worked on I, I yeah I guess so um I think like the, my favorite ones are like community-based projects okay. <laughs> you know um, my first video uh, that I ever costume designed mm. was for Chicano Batman okay um, and I that, think I know those guys yeah I think so <laughs> <laughs> um, through Geo um, Solis that's right you did that, and you also worked with Tropa Magica, right? Yeah. The other homies, yeah. Yes, I did. And so, like, dressing them up as, like, banda and, like, making this big quinceanera mm. dress, uh, you know, for, like, uh, 1993 or something, yeah. you know? And so I got to, like, live my neighbor girl fantasy and, like, you know, all the girls I looked up to, like, you know, with the baggy jeans and, like, the yeah. the, the, the big bangs and, like, um, I got to create that in the form of a person, oh, you nice. know? Yeah. And, um, and, like, a whole quinceanera, like, I got to design it and I got to make it and it was just amazing. Those, well, the, that's my favorite. Like the, of all yeah. the things I've ever worked on, like. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna bug you and ask you again. There has to be a movie that you loved working on. <laughs> yes. Um. I don't know. They're all really challenging. You yeah. know, like it's not like you're really. A, is it a? Is it competitive? Um. Environment like within the studio or like. Well, I mean. There's there's a lot of things you know like is it a is it a good environment is it a toxic workspace you know like every set's different yeah. so it's not it's not like oh this movie was was horrible but um, I guess I'm like so used to behind the scenes and yeah. I'm like thinking of like of of like getting there on time or like what happened when we dress this person or how many background did we have mm. that day or we dressed three hundred people in like x amount of time mm. or um, things like that. Um, so I don't, it's not like I don't enjoy, I don't have a favorite movie, but like, I can't really think of one that was, Yeah. uh, I think my favorites are like the ones I really got to collaborate with, uh, like the director and like, I I think those two are like some of my favorites Okay. for sure. So talking about like toxic workspaces and things like that, I know that you now work with Ayatsi. Is there Latino caucus? Or um, am I saying this right? No. Um, <clears throat> or you've created a, a Latino caucus. Yeah. In what union? So um, in in the like umbrella of IATSE, which is okay. like everybody, which is like uh, greens, greens department, um, like set deck, mm-hmm. um, sound, um, camera, um, costume, hair, makeup, lighting um everything you know Mm. like it's everything you see in a film (laughs) you know Mm. props um everything production design um so so, within that you started yeah within that group yeah um i i started taking classes at um lacc um Mm. they have a really 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 good film department and well let me just say this real quick like you at one point were like wait a minute I need to understand more about how film is run. Yeah. So that I'm, I know that I'm not the one fucking up. 
Yeah, so, because... So you went back to school uh-huh. with Rodney Dangerfield and friends. No, it literally, you went back to school at, at LACC. Yeah. And you took some filmmaking classes. Yeah. And you made some of your own little films yeah. during that thing. So I did. you learned the process yeah. beginning to end. Yeah. I took a, a semester of grip, a semester of electric, a semester of camera, a semester of editing, um, a producing class just to understand better yeah. what's going on. Um, and just kind of like see what other departments like what resources they have and like because i always felt that like i didn't i wasn't given very many resources i wasn't given a bigger crew a decent budget Mm. um things like that and so um it's really hard when the expectations like this high and you don't have Mm. very much to work with you know Mm -hmm. um and so i wanted to see like what all the other departments had and so um in doing that um like when I decided to make the caucus, um, which was inspired by a lot of things. Um, it was inspired by the LA Times um, Latino caucus because mm. I saw in like 2020, they they created one. Um, I read about that, um, read that article and was like, man, I ought to need something like this, you know? Mm. And then my husband's like, well, why don't you do it? And I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> and then let someone else do that. Let a man do that. Let anybody do that. I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, and and then so, like, the, the, the LA Times Latino Caucus, that was really inspiring. And then um, Undocumented Filmmakers Collective. Um, mm. I know uh, Mario and um, Set. Um, and just seeing what they do, like um, as as like organizers, um, and like uplifting their own stories, and like um, I thought that was really amazing. And um, how did this process start? Because you're like your husband's telling you, "Why don't you do?" It? You're like, "Chale," but yeah, but you did. So how did you like decide to start doing that? Like, what was the first thing you did? Who did you call, or how did you start putting well, numbers together? Well, because no one was doing it. No one was doing it. And yeah. so I'm, like, waiting for somebody to do it, and no one wants to do it. So I'm like, damn it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what I did was, like, I mean, as a Latino, like, we have such a strong network, <laughs> you know? Like, mm-hmm. we just know other Latinos, you know? And then mm-hmm. they'll, like, fill us in. They'll give us the 411 on the place or the layout or you know, who's the boss or watch out for this person or, you know, whatever. And so it's like, so I knew a lot of Latinos and, and then when I'd go on set, I wouldn't see very many of us. And so when we, when we saw each other, it was like a celebration. We're like, Oh my God, we're here. Can you believe it? You know? And so like, um, yeah, I, I would meet like a sound guy or whomever, you know? And like, generally we like, uh, what is the word? we don't like kind of intermingle as departments. Mm. And so like I would see someone I, but then I'd never see them again, Mm. you know? So I thought this was kind of a way to like, for us to like be in community and to be connected. Mm. Um, So I began. uh, Kind of like be able to check in more often and be able to see how everyone's doing. Yeah. 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 And just build community, you know? And then also, you know, like in, talking with a bunch of other like BIPOC like heads of department or creatives like it was kind of a a trend to see that we aren't given as many resources as Mm. um I'm just gonna say like white heads of department you know Mm. and like a lot of times it's like oh you're gonna get this credit or don't you want to be on this person's film and it's like aren't you lucky to be working here i've gotten that myself yeah (laughs) and so it's like but i bust my ass to get here you know like and and so um it was like a trend and and so um in talking with more people i knew like i'm like oh man this isn't right like we we you know we gotta like get together and like figure out a solution you know Mm -hmm. um amongst ourselves or like just figure out a way to like build community and protect each other and then also like build visibility Mm -hmm. for us um Mm -hmm. in in our departments you know Mm -hmm. like they're like i was on set recently and there were 10 of us in in the department and i was the only latina and so it's like one out of Mm (laughs) ten you know like that's not 
cool you know and then it's also very isolating and if there's like a problem on set or something or racism it's really hard to to stand up because there's no one to stand with you mm. you know and so um i think this like was a solution for us to like communicate our concerns and like um and um yeah so how how do you form a is there like a formal like thing that you put together to or do you guys just meet is it just yeah what um, do you guys do when you meet or well first you have to find all these people right mm -hmm. and so we're still working on that i mean we've only been around for like seven months but like mm -hmm. i've been working on the caucus for two years i was like trying to learn as much as i could mm -hmm. about about um unionism and and caucuses and like what's and the law and like what i can do what i can't do and then speaking with a button and finding allies like mm -hmm. really wonderful like um like attorneys and um uh geez like uh professors of labor law and immigration and mm -hmm. like just all these like really rad people that i didn't even know like you could study labor like that's amazing you know um and and just like getting support and finding allies first i would say is like a good direction to go and just like just hardcore like research and then look at other organizations and kind of be like oh i like that you know um like like um, undocumented filmmakers collective or um there's also a group in costume department uh and in, in my union called fabric mm. and that's all black costumers oh, who wow. got together and like you know like yeah there's there is racism you know mm. and so or or there's not a lot of BIPOC people um, in our in our union mm. um, and so that can also lead to just like being very vulnerable mm. you know if you're the only one and um, and so yeah they got together and they started this thing for black costumers and so I was like man we need that for all of IATSE mm. and so um, through taking all those classes you know my grip class my electric class I would go on set and I'd be like, there's not a lot of Latinos in that department either. <laughs> and there's not a lot of them over there either. And then I look at like, oh, that's another thing is like, I look at the, the call sheet, which is like this like piece of paper that tells you like what time each person needs to come in to work because it's all so different. Like lighting might need to be there early. Costume always needs to be there early, you know? Um, like I'd see that like a lot of the Latino names were kind of um entry level like mm. positions and so it's like where's our upward mobility mm. you know like how long have you been in that position and why aren't why aren't we heads of department you know yeah um so so that was like addressing those things too like seeing other people in in our caucus meeting or like um or people I meet in every department. Like every time I go on set, like mm. I just kind of meet people. Um, <laughs> I try to be like, You're hey, really what's up? <laughs> and just connect, you know? Um, and and yeah, when I see that, like I, I just saw a lot of um, parallels, you know, to my mm. story and, I, and, and it just didn't seem right. So um, the caucus is, I just started the IATSE Latinx caucus so that we can um, just figure out what we can do to um, just make things better for Latinx people in mm. the film industry, not not the superstars, you know, yeah. like because I know that they're like every time we see like a Latino person on 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 TV, it's like this major celebration, like and and that's great, you know, and 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 yes, I've seen a lot of like articles and like you know Vanity Fair or or Hollywood Reporter about about um, diversity in Hollywood. And it's like, they're, they're talking about the writers, the directors, the producers, and the actors. I'm like, that takes up this much space on the call sheet. That's this many people. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's two pages of, of yeah. people with three columns. What about them, you know? Yeah. And it's like, um, it's sad, you know? And, and, and That's really shining a light on like that. The, like the little tiny cracks of <laughs> you know like the people that are left in the dark it's like no look over here too not just you're right like not just the people who have 
the bright lights on them, but also like yeah. look over on the side the other people yeah. that need help in this thing. Yeah. Since you started this, I know it's been only a short time, but have you seen any kind of difference? Like, the, uh, what what has your response been within the you know, industry? Like non non Latinos that okay. see what you're doing, okay. have you felt any kind of um? Okay. Um. You know, I don't think non Latinos know about us. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. But I mean, IATSE knows about us. We're not a part of IATSE, but mm. we are. But anyone can build a caucus if you are like a, a union member or mm. any member of a, of a group you know like you can do that um that's like your first amendment right and so um we ha I, I mean i have a good relationship with my uh with my union you know 705 so um yeah and i, I speak i speak to leadership mm -hmm. in iatsi um but um i don't really see much support from other people you know and so um that'd be nice you know that'd be really awesome because like visibility is more than like getting a bunch of latinos in the union which would be amazing i'm like i'm not saying like that's mm. not a solution but there's a lot of like systemic problems like don't get all these people here and bring them into like a toxic environment mm. you know we need to fix the problem that already exists which is like accountability and like um oppression classism and like also you know you bring you bring a latino like producer or writer or director in and that and and it's like oh wow we have we have one you know and then that doesn't mean that they're gonna treat us any better you know that doesn't mean that they're gonna not you know a lot of them are very classist a lot of the celebrities are too and so like when i see people like celebrate these you know, celebrities, uh, these millionaires, you know. I have one celebrity that I worked on a movie with that I will always remember the way that he always looked at me on the set, and it was not nice. Right. It was like every time I walked by him, and the people around him were really nice to me, but he mm -hmm. always gave me this dirty-ass look that I hated to this day. Like, I still remember that shit, how yeah. it made me feel on set. Yeah, yeah. For no reason. Yeah. For no reason. Yeah. yeah. And like, is, yeah, that's like, why? Yeah. Why? It's Just free. Just didn't like me. You know? Because like, why he was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of oppression, like systemic oppression. Like, just because you're Latino doesn't mean that, like, you're any nicer to us or, like, care that we're there or, like, you're not making us do 16-hour days or you're yeah. not yelling <laughs> at us or you're not <laughs> cussing us out or something weird, mm -hmm. you know? Like, they just, like, there's so many people that like crabs in a barrel you know they just want to make it yeah. and um like there i just w hope that like the co through the caucus like we just want to like achieve like um kind of unity on set and like mutual respect you know because uh there's not a latino there's not a lot of latinos there and so that to me shows like the few that are there like worked really really crazy hard to get there yeah you know because like the workforce in like Los Angeles is like 39% Latino and if there's only like one one out of 10 there like yeah that's on purpose yeah so what are you doing right now on sets are you're not doing costumes anymore or you're not designing anymore I'm not designing anymore um I had a situation occur um, they kind of changed my life, you know, mm. like, um, I wanted to be a designer so bad. I wanted to be in this world so bad. I wanted to, I wanted to like change the narratives of like how people see us, you know, mm. like I wanted to work on Latino projects, you know, and like, just got like sick of watching people in wife beaters and like, you know, Chi Chi's out, big hoops, you know, I'm like, oh, so embarrassing, you know, like and and then i get my chance and then like i'm just asked to do like stereotypes mm. you know i'm specifically asked for wife beaters and i'm like or i'm told that like oh they want this character to be hood and then they have a narrative arc and then they start dressing normal once like a baby's born and now they're responsible parents and i'm just like no people can dress that way and be responsible parents like like this is crazy like what are we trying to say <laughs> you know like what are we doing here or I'd like purposely try to put someone in a t-shirt and they're like oh we want a wife beater and I'm like 
he, he could wear a t-shirt to bed, you know, <laughs> like it's not necessary, right? You know, or like he could walk around his house, like, and so it's just like, not just, ugh, there's just so much, there's just so much to fix that like, you know, I guess like bringing light to what I can, you mm. know, is, is all I can do. But um, there's just so much, you know, it's just like how, how we're seen on TV. And then also how we're treated, you know, mm. like as crew. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot. So if you're not designing, what are you doing now? Oh, man. <laughs> no. No. That's okay. Um, okay, so I'm not designing anymore. So I had a really hard time with that. <laughs> and, um, you know, DFEH is investigating, you know, it's like, come on, like, why is this happening? And then, and then what happened with that project, mind you, um, I, I spoke with, cause I was a co-chair of the diversity committee in yeah. my union. And so then I, in that, I spoke with other BIPOC, um, co-chairs. Mm -hmm. And so one-on-one, -on -one, like when I was like talking to some, um, black hair and makeup, um, mm -hmm. heads of department, they told me that the same shit happens to them. Mm. They told me that, like, on their show, on, like, oh, can't name names. Uh, no, too okay. many names. Well, I'm still trying to understand. But, like, but, but I guess what I'm trying to say. What's your job on sets now is what I was trying to figure out. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, the same thing happens to them. They're asked to make their cultures look yeah, bad. Yeah, of course. And they're being treated bad, and they're not given as many resources. And so mm. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm done designing. No more. Thank you very much. And so now I help. I'm just an assistant. I assist. Oh, okay, okay. Not even. I don't even assist anymore. Actually, that's an assistant designer position. I'm a costumer. I help get the clothes together. I help get yeah. people ready. Um, so you're still in the costume department. Yeah. But you're not designing. Anymore. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm not doing that anymore. Oh, okay. That's it. That's all I wanted mm -hmm. to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I just want to know hard. your responsibilities on set. It's hard because, like, <clears throat> I wanted to do that so bad. Yeah, but at one point. Um, you know, it's just okay to just, you know, get some of the responsibilities off of you and just mm -hmm. do, like, the day-to-day -day stuff that needs to be done, right, mm -hmm. on sets, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, prepping the clothes and, like, steaming it and, like, yeah. getting it on people and making sure they don't, like, leave stains on themselves after lunch yeah. and, like, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so, like, it's, it's, it's a good job, and I... I still get to be on movie sets. Yeah, I mean, let's like just say that it's a pretty fucking awesome job to be able to work where you work. Yeah. And there's a million people that, you know, have probably applied for that job and not gotten it. Yeah, so, but they should. So. They should get those jobs. And yeah, anyone yeah. that likes movies can do this anything in this industry. Like, yeah. like, like if you, if you, you know, if your family was let's just say like worked in the garment industry you could you if you like clothes you can work in this department you don't even have to know how to sew yeah. if you like taking pictures you could be a set photographer yeah. you can be a cinematographer you could you know if you work if your family's an electrician like you could work in in lighting yeah. you know greens um department does all the fake trees and grass and stuff and so like even you know like if, if somebody's uh, family worked in landscaping or they worked in landscaping they can be a part of this industry and I think also with the Latinx caucus what we want to do and what we're trying to do is to share all the jobs that are available with the community and like uplifting like the worker not mm. just the celebrity <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's good now I heard that you're studying comedy now <laughs> <laughs> you're funny <laughs> Um, yeah, like I, so this is another thing that you wanted to figure out and you went back to take some, oh some my God. classes. I, how did you, how did this happen? Um, so during the pandemic, I was really nervous about zoom. Oh, I was okay. like, Oh my God, I have to see my face and I have to talk to all these people. And so, um, I started taking improv just to become more relaxed. Oh, that's you know? good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then, and then, and then it just snowballs. And then I'm like, yeah. okay, improv one, improv two, at UCB online. And then, um, and then like writing out of curiosity, I'm like, well, I read a lot of scripts. I wonder, I wonder what that's like, you mm. know? And then, so I took writing, I took, um, acting a few times. Um, All yeah, this is online? Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, and at the comfort of your own home and, like, with all these, like, people who just want to learn from, like, all over the U.S. And it was just, like, a really good, like, welcoming environment, you know, like, learning space. And so, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, I so will you be doing stand up soon or? I should take the class just to do it, <laughs> just to learn like, oh my God, can I do this? You know, yeah. but um, probably, probably not. Um, <laughs> I think it's more just like. Uh, you wanted like speech help. Or yeah. Like, you know, be able to do public speaking. Yeah. Type thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you're a really good speaker. You're really good um, at meeting people because. You, you're you really easy to like say hi to people and get to know them and wonder I think you're really good at thank you. that um, networking skill that not a lot of people have oh thank you not the way you do you have a really good skill oh, at that yeah you're really thanks. good at that um, is there anything that, that you think we need to cover that we haven't covered you want to talk about yeah um, people power you know like if there's a problem in your workplace or anywhere mm. like just talk to other people and then and then they may have the same experience and then you just like figure out a solution and it's like oh wait it's not me it's (laughs) it's the system (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then you just like work to fix the system but then also I guess what I want to say is like (sighs) oppression and like disempowerment goes both ways you know Mm. like um somebody like in this industry you know or like you know just tries to get their way or whatever you know like um i guess like don't feel disempowered don't give your power away you know like Mm. i think that that's like the most important thing to remember you know is that you have power and you have a voice yeah Yeah. and you don't give it away and you don't and if people make you feel bad then like leave the situation or try to find a safe one you know like it's not um it's not any reflection on the person, you know, it's the environment, like just like the garment workers or the, or the farm workers. And then just like learning all these yeah. amazing like movements, you know, like that also is, is really uh, important and, and uh, which changes things like, yeah. you know, learning the past. So do you have a, a website that people can find yes. this on? <laughs> yes, it is ayatsilatinx.org. Nice. Yeah, and we have an Instagram, um, ayatsi.latinx. Okay. And do you want to share yours? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, like, um, gosh, you know, I guess, like, just... Um, I don't know. I guess I've had a lot of um, bumps in my road Mm -hmm. to self-advocacy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But now that I'm there, like, I really, I'm I'm really happy, you know? Like, and and just, like, I guess, like, I I started, like, the caucus, like, because Mm -hmm. my friends would know that I knew my rights in the union. Like, know your rights. Like, it's super important because when somebody infringes on it, you could be like, nah, I can't do that. Or, oh, that's Mm -hmm. against contract, you know? Um, but like my friends would come to me for like, oh, advice or like, oh, this is happening at work. What do I do? What do I do? And so like I was advocating for them so much that I'm like, oh, this can be a part of the caucus, you know? Mm. And, um, yeah, like I, in advocating for other people, I guess, like I learned how to advocate for myself and I was Mm. always like channeling it in other Mm. directions, you Mm. know? But then it's like, okay, I got to do that for myself too. That's okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's really good to see um, this position that you have right now, or, or the place that you're at right now. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Congratulations on all this. Thank you so much. And um, we have a question that we ask everybody at the end oh, of yeah. each show. I think you've seen it before. <laughs> I think so. I think, like your number one fan. Are you ready for it? <laughs> yeah. Well, so Jen, how do you do it? patience and self-compassion because there's so much work to do you know and and sometimes I think I'm not doing enough or I could squeeze some more in or what if and it's just like no there's time to do it and there's help to do it so uh, it just helps with burnout if you 
you're just yeah. self-compassionate. So it. patience and self-compassion. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I like it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming here and spending time with us and sharing all of the work that you're doing. And um, congratulations on your new caucus. And Thank you. that's it. We'll okay. see you guys next week.